is one of the cheapest laptops that money can buy. It is the Pinebook. It's a $99 ARM-based processor made by the people who are competitors to Raspberry Pi. They make the Pine 64 chip. It's a $20 version of a Raspberry Pi, which has a little bit more memory than a Raspberry Pi. And it's cheaper somehow. To promote the device, they made a laptop version which runs the card inside. And of course, it has a keyboard, a trackpad, a screen, a battery, some speakers, some lights that tell you whether it's on or off, a couple of USB slots, and micro SD card reader, a microphone hole, and a webcam, of course. All the things you would expect in a laptop. It was designed to look very much like a MacBook Air. And in many ways, they succeeded in making it look like that. As you can see, the keyboard in the bottom half where the battery is, it's very compact, it's very slim, similar to the dimensions of, indeed, the MacBook Air. However, they could not get a small enough screen, like a thin enough screen, to actually fit the MacBook style into this cheap plastic device. The back and sides of the device have an Ikea-esque sort of feel, feeling very much like the composite cardboard that they use to build the Ikea furniture, such as the LAC table. Similarly, it scuffs just as easily as you would expect that sort of white furniture to do. If you leave a shoe on top of it and take the shoe off, it will leave very visible scratch marks. However, removing these scratch marks is not complicated. You will try water, you will try Windex, neither of those will work. What you need is you have either a magic eraser or just a regular eraser. From the back of a pencil, you take it and scrub it off and it's fine. The markings have mostly been removed and it makes itself fairly noteworthy. But it is indeed very easy to scuff. However, the bottom of the device was made out of a different style of plastic, leaving it a little bit more resistant to abrasions and scratches and scrapes and marks. So you'll be much less likely to scrape the bottom of it than you will the top. I've been using it for a couple of months now, and not primarily because it's, honestly, it's impossible to do anything that you would want to usually do. And the things that are possible just take about 10 times longer. Admittedly, to make this video, I would not want a $20 microprocessor to be doing the rendering of 4K video. That would just not work at all. So I still use other devices because I need to do things on time. Indeed, the network card on the Pinebook is very slow. It's not what you call snappy. If you were to go and download the same file on any Windows machine and the Pinebook, you would find that the Windows machine, any Windows machine, was fairly able to download about 10 times faster than the Pinebook is. The other issue with the Pinebook is application support. It runs a variant of Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution. So if you don't know Linux, that's a strike off for you already. Installing things is very commonly done through the command line. So if you're not used to that, again, this is a scary device. And because it's such an odd distribution of Linux, not all of the regular packages which you would expect to work in Linux actually work. It's an ARM-based hardware that does not allow those sorts of things that require a 32-bit architecture and a 64-bit Intel architecture to actually work. When you use the device on anything other than a table, for example, your lap or on a sofa, you will notice that as you use the device, it will flex slightly on the bottom, which is fine. You're not damaging the device at all. However, it will inadvertently sometimes do a mouse click when you bend it too much. Also, while you're typing, it does not have the best typing detection to Mac and Windows both feature, um, allowing you to type. And, and as you're typing, the trackpad is turned off so you don't get accidental clicks elsewhere. So often you'll be typing and your cursor will be mysteriously moved. The webcam is laughable. Um, the microphone and the webcam together sort of make this joke of a webcam system. However, it is included on many other cheap, cheap and low-end devices. They're simply not there or just not functioning. These do function. They are functional. But as you can see, it's not the highest quality of picture slash video. Another aspect of the laptop is the sound, the sound that it makes. One of the things that people do on computers is they entertain themselves. They watch YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and other such online streaming services. That is made difficult here. Uh, it does not have enough RAM, and me RAM or memory or whatever it needs to load Netflix, so Netflix viewing is pretty much out. You can watch things on YouTube, and if you're into it, other sorts of watching sites, such as Solar Movie or Watch Series. Um, and these will load intermittently, uh, not quickly, again, because the internet card is not the qu quickest. But that is not your problem in this case. As you'll see, the sound is very menial. I've got this device turned all the way up. However, not all the things about this laptop are bad. 
For example, the battery. The battery is simply a beast. The charge time ends up being around six to seven hours. Most Windows devices and other things charge within two to three hours, which is a reasonable charge length. However, most Windows computers cannot give you a full day's screen on time. This device can. The, the screen will stay on the entire day if you were to set up like a PowerPoint or a video that kept re repeating or something. It can stay on all day and that is truly impressive. One of the other interesting features about this device is the power cord. With devices like the Surface and the previous MacBooks, which all had a version of MagSafe um, that allowed like a trip proof cord, the Pinebook does not have these fail safes built in. It uses a standard nine volt power connector that's about three feet. So if you're planning on using your device while it's charging, you pretty much have to have an outlet on your desk. That being said, this is an incredibly novel device. It's very unique. Um, it runs Linux, which production computers don't usually run Linux. It's also unusual that brand new, it costs less than $100, $89 for the 11 inch version and $99 for the 14 inch version. And these are two very low prices for a computer that mostly works. Many of the other ones that come out around this range are scams. They're trying to take your money because they're giving you a device which doesn't work at all. This clearly does. This is a laptop. You could use it depending on what sort of thing you do. If your job is to type documents in a notepad editor, that's fine. It would work great. However, using this device daily for everything you do on a computer, it doesn't seem like it's, it's a viable option. You can't watch Netflix, which is something that I do with frequency. If I'd like to download something, it's hard because it runs out of space very quickly. But the truth is, if you're looking for a device that does basic things, it will work. It will function, it will last all day. You can check your email and browse the internet slowly all day long. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel for more reviews of interesting tech. If you think this is interesting, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Ask a question. We'll see if we can answer it soon, and we'll see you in the next video.